Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Neil Galvin. I'm a registered nurse and I do have a degree in medical surgical nursing. I create my nursing educational videos to help nursing students and nursing professionals like you with their studies. If that is something that you are interested in, consider subscribing. If you are already a subscriber though, thank you so much for your love and support. I see you. I upload my nursing educational videos Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Please make sure to subscribe now, hit the notification bell so that you will be the very first to watch my newest uploads. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends because that will really help me know that you like to see more contents like this. Without further ado, nurse, let's just jump in to the video. Hi everyone, welcome back to ating classroom discussion for today online. Yes, yes. And I am just so excited for today's class because this is another nursing procedure and skills entry natin sa um, dito sa ating playlist, dito sa ating channel. Kung di mo pa napapanood yung upload natin ng Monday and nung Wednesday kung saan I actually created bunch of helpful educational materials for all of you guys, check out my previous uploads because that is so, so uh, highly educational and highly entertaining for all of you guys. Before I further proceed, I would just like to really grab this opportunity. Oh, no, not grab this opportunity, but I just want to say, hi, kumusta kayo? Anong mga ganap nyo sa buhay? Wherever you are right now, whatever time zone you're watching me right now, just wish you good morning, good afternoon, and good night, just in case I don't get to see you. Welcome to the class. Welcome to the online, free, entertaining, highly edu ah, <laughs> educational classroom discussion dito sa ating YouTube channel. Nako, maraming maraming salamat nga po sa lahat sa inyo na patuloy at walang sabong sumusuporta sa channel ko. Thank you, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. You guys, malapit na nating mahit yung ating 20,000 mark um, goal for this month. Um... Maraming maraming salamat po. Keep on sharing and keep on liking my videos, spreading the news about my channel because I am really motivated and determined to help you guys with your studies, lalong-lalo na sa mga estudyante natin dyan sa nursing at pati na rin sa mga nursing professionals na gustong mag-refresh ng kanilang knowledge when it comes to nursing education. Alam naman natin na halos every day nga laging may update about sa nursing education and I am here for all of you guys. Okay, I'm gonna make it easier for you. Trust me. Okay, so, wag na tayo magpatumpik-tumpik pa bago ang lahat. Gusto lang kitang anyayahan. To follow me on all my other social media accounts, everything is at Neil Galve. Kung hindi mo pa ako fina-follow, except for my TikTok account, which is Neil Galve Official, I do have a Facebook page. This educational material, this video presentation, this classroom discussion is also going to be uploaded there. So, please make sure to check that one out. Share it from my Facebook page. And then I have a podcast channel. It's 3 a.m. Conversation with Neil Galve. The links to all my uh, social media accounts is going to be available on the description box. Now, ito na, hindi ko na patatagal yung pa. Medyo, medyo mahaba ito at super juicy itong ating discussion for today. Okay, so like you see on the title, this is all about your continuous kidney replacement therapy, CKRT, monitoring and care. Another entry natin sa ating nursing procedures and skills. Yes. Sa mga lahat, sa mga lahat, sa lahat ng mga ICU nurses dyan at sa mga may babalak na pumasok sa ICU, this is the common procedures that we do in the area. So, kung hindi ka pa familiar, if you're not acquainted yet, uh, to this type of procedure that we normally do in ICU, this is now the time for you to be acquainted and be familiarized when it comes to procedures and skills. Paano mo nga ba iahanda ang sarili mo? Uh, when it comes to kapag ang doktor ay nag-order ng CKRT, sa ibang libro makikita mo siyang CRRT, Continuous Renal uh, Replacement Therapy. Iba naman, continuous kidney replacement therapy, CKRT. Pero, isa lang sila. Okay? So, eto na tayo. Let's proceed. Ay, ay, ayan. So, this is another entry natin, yung ultimate study guide when it comes to your CKRT or CRRT. Another playlist natin sa ating nursing procedures and skills. 
ang dami ko na nga pong ginawang lecture materials regarding sa mga procedures and skills na ginagawa natin sa nursing, i-click mo yung description box or kapag nagpapot yung icon button, i-click mo yon kasi ilalagay ko yung playlist link dyan together with the other playlist I have on my channel. Now, this is going to be a thorough discussion when it comes to procedures and skills of your CKRT or CRRT. I want you to open your eyes, open your mind, and just absorb whatever information you're gonna take from here. I'm open for any questions and queries. Put them down on the description box. And then, what else? Um, uh, yeah, if you're watching this video presentation on YouTube, I'm gonna be dividing it into chapters. So, kung meron kang naguluhan, hindi ka mo nag-gets, balik-balikan mo lang, may mga timestamp dyan. Okay? So, eto na tayo. Let me share to you the objectives for today's discussion. Let's begin. So in this uh, classroom discussion, we're going to discuss or answer the question, what is CKRT? We're going to talk about the indications, contraindications, the equipments that we use in performing this type of procedure, um, implementation, step by step, one by one, from ano, 1 to 20 and more, mga ganon. And uh, Including sa implement nursing implementation natin, I'm gonna give you non-anticoagulation strategies and CKRT system monitoring kasama yon sa implementation process. I'm gonna give you special considerations, complications, and of course, your documentation, which is very, very important as well. All right, mag-proceed na tayo. Let us answer the question, what is CKRT or CRRT? Okay, kapag ginamit ko yung CKRT or CRRT, wag malilito, I'm using it interchangeably because basically they're just the same. Okay, let's answer this question na. Eto na. So, let me introduce to you C uh, CIS, eh. Bisaya, kabanday. CKRT. Now, continuous kidney replacement therapy or what we call CKRT is an extracorporeal blood purification therapy used to treat patients with acute kidney injury. What? AKI. Unlike the more traditional hemodialysis, CKRT administration occurs around the clock, providing patients with continuous therapy. Totoo po ito. Kadalasan ng doktor mag-order mag yan. Meron yung CRRT order or CKRT order to run for 72 hours. Continuous. Okay? Now, or 48 hours. Depende po sa presentation ng pasyente mo and depende sa indication. Now, CKRT also spares patients the dis, uh, dis, uh, destabilizing hemodynamic and electrolyte changes characteristic of traditional hemodialysis. The therapy is performed through a patient's dialysis catheter, which is typically placed in the subclavian, internal jugular, or femoral vein. This is the common areas the uh, dialysis line na kadalasan na meron sa mga pasyente. Importante na meron kang dialysis line. Ano-ano yung mga common dialysis line na ginagamit ng doktor? Meron ka dyang, ano yun? Subclavian, internal jugular, or femoral vein. Okay? Pag wala pang dialysis line, wala pang central line ng pasyente mo, madalas, mag-ano mag sila yan, mag-insert mo na ng central line, then magpo-proceed na sa CKRC. Okay? Now, care for a patient who is receiving CKRT involves monitoring and care of the patient with a CKRT system. Monitoring and care should be completed every one to two hours or more often as needed. Sa facility namin, ginagawa namin ang monitoring Q1. Kapag, since the beginning of your um, CRRT, Q1 po ang monitoring. Meron silang CKRT sheet or CRRT sheet na fill out ng nurses, minomonitor yung, um, yung setting ng CRRT machine, yung daya, yung, tag dito, what's this, the, the vital signs of the patients, all of that good stuff, okay? Q1 or Q2, depende sa facility. Okay, now providing care for a patient who is receiving CKRT requires specialized training. Adherence to facility guidelines is necessary for maintaining competency to care for patients who are receiving CKRT. Mind you guys, ha, ma hindi ko pa nasabi sa inyo, the, the, the reference I, ha I have with this uh, presentation is from Lippincott. Okay. So, makakaasa kayo, garantisado 100% ang mga information na naandito is 
from the pen ko then 100% accurate. All right? So malino ba tayo? Nasagot na natin kung ano ang ibig sabihin ng CKRT, ha? Huh? Or CRRT. Mag-proceed na tayo sa indications. The following is the list of indications to carry out CRRT in a patient. Eto tayo. Ano ano? Kani-kanino mo ba binibigay? O ano ano bang mga what's this? Clinical presentation ng pasyente or diagnosis ng pasyente kung saan indicated yung CRRT. Eto na po. Kalma ha. Now, CRRT is indicated in patients who meet criteria for hemodialysis therapy but cannot tolerate conventional intermittent hemodialysis. So, yung tinatawag nating IHD due to hemodynamic instability. Significant decrease of circulating blood volume can be observed in IHD due to fast fluid removal and can increase the risk of hypotension. Okay. Very important nga pala, speaking of hypotension, every time that you will do CKRRT, IHD, you hold any antihypertensive before the procedure. Why? Kasi magtatanggal ka na nga ng dugo, mag, mag, maglilinis ka na nga, magtatapon ka ng dugo. Bibigyan mo pa ng antihypertensive yan, magsashock ang pasyente mo. You don't want that. Okay? So, Mag-proceed tayo. Ano-ano mga ulit mga indication? Doon sa mga pasyenteng may, hindi kaya yung conventional intermittent hemodialysis. Okay? So, binibigay ang indicated ng CRRT. This is like a short-term type of dialysis. Pag sinabi mo kasing hemodialysis, schedule basis yan. Kung baga regular, Monday, Friday, ah, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, nakaschedule talaga siya. And normally, yung mga pasyente na uh, uh, regular hemodialysis, sila na yung may mga ESRD, sila na yung mga uh, talagang damage na yung kanilang end-stage renal disease, kumbaga. So, ito, ito po yung mga indications. We have vol- uh, volume overload, metabolic acidosis, para makorek yung kanilang electrolyte imbalance. Uh, electrolyte abnormalities are also included. Hyperkalemia hyponatremia, drug and toxin removal, hyperphosphatemia, uremia, encephalopathy, pericarditis, and of course, persistent or progressive acute kidney injury. Once again, these are the indications of your CKRT. Magproceed na tayo. What about the contraindications? The main contraindication for CRRT is the need to have treatment outcomes re- Uh, reached more rapidly than the CRRT treatment can accomplish. The following is a comprehensive list of contraindications to perform continuous renal replacement therapy. Eto na tayo. Iisa-isahin natin ito. Huwag kayo mag-alala. Kani, kung kanina, binigay ko sa inyo yung kung, kanina, kung, kung kaninong pasyente mo siya ibibigay, ito naman, kaninong pasyente mo siya hindi ibibigay. Unang-una sa mga pasyenteng may advanced directives indicating that the patient does not want dialysis. Pangalawa, inability to establish vascular access. Walang central line, walang femoral line, walang jugular line, walang um, subclavian line. Inability, hindi mo ma-access. Kasi sa mo, saan, saan ka mag-aano si KRT? Aber, hindi to pwedeng peripheral. Next, lack of expertise or the right equipment. Pag hindi highly competent yung nurse na gagawa, yung doktor na gagawa, lack of experience, and also the right equipment, yung machine mismo. And then, irreversible liver failure when the patient is not a candidate for liver transplant. Once again, these are the contraindications for your CRRT slash CKRT. Magproceed na tayo sa... Equipments. O, oh, diba? Sabi ko sa inyo, iisa-isahin natin ito eh. Hindi tayo papayag for today's discussion. Now, preparation of equipment, inspect, in, in line with our, um, iisa-isahin ko sa inyo yung equipments that you're gonna use, right? But I want you to pay attention in regards to preparation of equipment. Let me say this to you. Inspect all equipment and supplies. If a product is expired, is the effect uh, defective, or has compromised integrity, remove it from the patient use. Label it, uh, label it as expired or defective and report the expiration or defect as directed by your facility. Make sure emergency equipment is functioning properly 
and readily available. Okay? So, eto na tayo. Ito, ito na yung mga materials, articles na gagamitin mo during your CRRT procedure. Huh, marami ito, ha? Marami-rami ito. Hingang malalim, eto na. First, you need to use stethoscope. You need to use scale para sa timbangin ng pasyente. Intake and output measuring supplies. Depende kung naka-follies catheter ang pasyente mo. Kailangan mo ng urinal. Kailangan mo ng proper labeling doon. What else? Laboratory blood sampling supplies. Labels. Laboratory biohazard transport bag. Cardiac monitor with leads and electrodes. Importante na naka-attach sa cardiac monitor ang pasyente. Vital signs monitoring equipment. Yun na yung iyong cardiac monitor. Yun na yung uh, auto-saturation probe. Yun na yung ang iyong temperature checking kung naka-attach sa axilla. Ano pa? Pulse oximeter and probe, kagaya na sinabi ko kanina, disinfectant pad, gloves of course, facility approved disinfectant, nakadepende yan sa SOP, kung alcohol, kung uh, tawag dito, chlorhexidine, kung anpabito, alcohol pads, whatever. It depends on your facility. Emergency equipment, um, uh, emergency equipments which include code cart, With emergency medications, defibrillator, handheld resuscitating bag with mask, intubation equipment. Kadalasan naman sa start ng ship, inichinicheck itong mga um, uh, supplies na ito. Crash cart, intubation uh, cart, dressing cart, kung ano-ano pang cart, IV set cart, mga ganon. Now, this is... The next one is optional supplies. Ano ano yung mga optional supplies needed to restock and basket or cart. If you use prescribed di diacetylate solution and other ordered solutions, gown, mask with face shield, mask, goggles, hemodynamic monitoring equipment, blankets, warm blanket, laboratory request uh, forms. Ito, optional lang naman ito. Pero yung dialysate, importante yan na pinapalitan. Okay, in order yan. Ano pa ba? Uh, goggles, hemodynamic monitoring equipment, blankets, warm blanket, kasi meron yung tina-target na. Yung warm blanket na yon depende kapag nag-hypothermia yung pasyente o kapag may target na, target level uh, body temperature, ang doktor, yun yun, importante ng blanket. Laboratory request forms, repositioning devices, prescribed normal saline, flush solution with or without heparin and administration supplies prescribe insulin and administration supplies prescribe bolus of anticoagulant medication and administration supplies prescribe elect uh, electrolyte infusions and administration supplies CKRT circuit change supplies okay yun po ang yo mga gagamitin eto po sila Siyempre, kasama dyan yung machine, kasama rin dyan yung pinakagagamitin mong depende sa order ng doktor ng mga solutions, okay? So, mag-proceed na tayo sa implementation. Nako, ito, nurses, ha, hingang malali, medyo madugo ito. At sinabi ko sa inyo kanina, mahaba-habang discussion ito. Kaya, kung ako sa iyo, hindi ka pa nagtimpla ng kape, i-post mo itong video na to, i-get mo yung notes mo kasi... Medyo mahaba-haba ito, okay? Kasi I promise you na iisa-isahin natin ito sila. I want this lecture to be your number one go-to lecture material when you are going to perform CRRT procedure to your patient, okay? That's why, sige na, pagpasensyahan nyo na ako, medyo ok, -ok lang, pero iisa-isahin natin to para sa inyo. Okay, ito na tayo sa implementation. Intervention na tayo, real action na. Ito na. Hinga ng malalim. Una, verify the practitioner's orders for CKRT so that changes can be implemented as needed. Hindi important, hindi, hindi pwede mag-proceed ka sa CKRT nang walang order ng doktor. Gigigil ako sa'yo. Pangalawa, gather and prepare the necessary equipment and supplies. After mo i-verify, gagather mo na yung art, uh, articles mo. Okay, kagaya ng diniscuss natin sa equipments kanina. Pangalawa, perform hand hygiene. Very important to prevent the spread of infection. Confirm the patient's identity using at least two patient identifiers. Nakadepende ito sa SOP ha. Sa mga pasyente na nasa ICU, importante na merong ID band and na nakalagay. And you have to verify that with two nurses. 
Okay, ID ban, i-verify sa system, i-verify yung pasyenteng magre-receive ng RRT na naka-attach sa ID ban, kung ano yung nakalagay sa system base sa pangalan niya, three name identifiers and or two name identifiers, depende sa facility with the medical number, medical, yeah, sa facility namin, tinatawag namin siyang MRN. But basically, that is the medical number of your patient, ID number. Next, provide privacy. Oh, privacy daw. Okay, next, eto pa, continuation, di pa tayo natatapos. Pagkatapos mo gawin lahat ng yon, eto pa. Explain the procedure to the patient and family if appropriate according to their individual communication and learning needs to increase their understanding, ally their fears, and enhance cooperation. Very important. Next, refill supplies as needed including the supply card or basket if used and prescribe dialysate, normal saline, and other solutions. Next, raise the bed to waist level before uh, before providing care to prevent caregivers back pain. Very important then na kung magsisimula ka ng CKRT, CRRT, ito mo muna yung afternoon care or morning care mo. Bakit? Kasi you don't wanna move the patient around, lalo kapag sensitive yung machine mo, para maiwasan yung movement. Baka mag-alarm na mag-alarm yan, magkaroon ka ng problema when it comes to your CKRT, hindi mag-go through yung, yung CKRT procedure mo kasi ginagalaw mo yung pasyente mo. You wanna make sure that you do all necessary procedures prior of the, yung, doing your CKRT para in place, intact yung pasyente mo, hindi siya nagagalaw-galaw. Okay? So, next, perform hand hygiene, very important to prevent in spread of infection. Next, put on gloves and other personal protective equipment as needed to comply with standard precautions. Depende kapag anong klase ng infectious precaution ng pasyente mo. Isolation precaution kung ito ay contact precaution, droplet precaution, uh, airborne precaution. Pero basically, dapat meron kang PPE na handa. Okay? Kasi mag-access ka ng ano? Central line. You don't wanna... In, you don't wanna inject any type of microorganism in there. Okay? Next, eto pa. Hindi pa tayo natatapos sa procedure. Sabi ko sa inyo eh. Perform an intra-treatment assessment including a respiratory assessment and assessment of the patient's dialysis center. Very important. Dialysis center, dialysis line. I-check mo. Lalo kapag bagong kabit yung central line ng pasyente mo, you have to have, pag femoral line, you have to have uh, backflow. Okay? To check the patency. Or pwede ang doktor mag-order ng what? Ultrasound to rule out about if the, the line is patent and in place. Next, frequent mo- frequently monitor the patient's vital signs, oxygen saturation level, and hemodynamic parameters for changes according to patient's condition. Next, if the patient exhibits signs of decreased body temperature such as hemodynamic instability, shivering, uh Pillow, uh, pillow reaction, skin pallor, coolness, and cyanosis assess for factors that might be contributing to a decrease in core temperature. Diba sinabi ko sa inyo kanina, may target core temperature uh, na ino-order ang doktor, kasama yun sa order ng doktor. Adjust the CKRT machine's operational temperature as ordered and according to manufacturer's instructions. Provide the patient with extra blankets for use a warming blanket if indicated. Dito sa facility namin, may warming blanket kami na-attach sa machine tapos pinapatong sa pasyente. Um, impa- maisingit ko lang, importante rin na kapag bago ka sa unit or first time mong gagawa ng CKRT, you have a senior with you who can teach you. And also, have yourself familiarize and really focus on take your time in learning the procedure, learning the machine, how to maneuver it, what are the alarms, what does the alarm tells you, how to remove this, how to put this, those kind of stuff. When to kink, when not to kink. You know what I mean? Or to apply clamp. Those things. So ask questions. Wag magalala. Okay, it's okay to ask intelligent questions. Intelligent questions. There's nothing wrong of asking question and asking for help. Okay. Next, maintain the patient's mean arterial pressure at greater than 60 millimeters of mercury or as specified by the practitioner's order. Next, obtain the patient's weight in kilograms as ordered to evaluate fluid balance and the effectiveness of therapy. Note that daily assessment of weight is usually ordered. Totoo po ito. Kadalasan kapag i-maneuver mo na yung machine, sa machine namin ha, you need to put what? Two information. The high, the weight, 
the current weight of the patients, and what? The hematocrit level. Very important. na enter mo yun sa machine. Paano mo kukunin ng weight ng bedridden na pasyente na nakatubo na nasa bed? Paano mo siya? Normally, yung mga ICU bed, meron yung uh, uh, nakaset up, naka up yan to get weight. So, adjust it. Get the initial weight before you start because get the baseline weight. I'm sorry. Baseline weight before you start because you have to be accurate in putting that information together with your hematocrit level. Hematocrit level, makikita mo yun sa system. Previews, CBC. Kung wala pang CBC na order ang doktor, magpa-CBC. Sabi mo sa doktor, magpa-CBC para makuha mo yung hematocrit level. Okay? Next. Ano pa? Ang gagawin mo, perform catheter exit site care according to facility guidelines and as needed. If the patient's dialysis catheter is placed in femoral vein, ensure the leg remains relatively still. Diba? Sabi ko sa inyo, kaya iwas iwasan yung paggalaw-galaw. Relative still, uh, relatively still to facilitate flow and prevent alarms. Diba sabi ko sa inyo, bago nyo simulan nyo si RRT, eh afternoon care mo na, eh morning care mo na, palitan mo na ng diaper, palitan mo na ng beddings, gawin mo na lahat ng gusto mong gawin bago mo start ang iyong CRRT to prevent alarms and to, to promote good flow. Okay? Next. Regul regularly reposition the patient to prevent pressure injuries while maintaining adequate blood flow through the catheter. Avoid causing alarms to limit interruptions in therapy. Depending on the location of the dialysis catheter, certain patient positions may impede flow and cause alarms. Maintain careful intake and output measurement in order to maximize and adjust therapy. Watch the patient closely for increased urine output. Weigh dressings. If they are heavily saturated, estimate insensible losses such as perspiration. If they're if they're included in the measurement at measurements at your facility. Next, clear IV pumps according to your facility's guidelines to assist with achieving accurate intake and output. Some facilities clear IV pumps hourly, uh, whereas others clear pumps only once a shift. Depende pa rin sa yung protocol sa facility. Ano pa? Ang haba di ba ng implementation? O, oh, ito na tayo. Collect laboratory blood samples as ordered according to the patient's condition and your facility's guidelines. Monitoring or electro monitoring of electrolyte and acid base balance typically occurs every 6 hours, 6 to 8 hours until levels are stable and then the frequency of monitoring decreases. Partial, uh, partial thromboplastin time is preferred uh, over activated clotting time for those receiving heparin for anticoagulation and is typically checked following boluses, four hours after dosage changes, and immediate after the administration of blood products. For a patient who is receiving citrate, monitoring of ionized calcium levels from both the patient and the system must occur every 30 to 60 minutes or after changes until the level is stable. Then, the frequency of monitoring decreases. Totoo po ito, after ng CRRT, six hours, mag-order ng doktor ng six hours post uh, initiation of your CRRT, expect mo na may labs. Q6 ito. Sa facility namin, Q6. Okay? Next, we have label the specimens in the presence of the patient to prevent mislabeling. Importante ang labeling kaya meron ka dyang tagging sa equipments mo. Okay? Place the samples in laboratory biohazard transport bag and send them immediately to the laboratory with the appropriate laboratory request forms if necessary. Next, notify the uh, practitioner of critical test results within your facility's established time, time frame so the patient can be treated promptly. If the patient's blood glucose level is elevated, collaborate with the patient's practitioner to adjust glucose concentration in the dia dialysate solution. Modify the replacement fluid composition if possible and appropriate. Or administer insulin as prescribed following safe medication administration practices. Administer prescribed boluses of anticoagulant medication as needed following safe medication administration practices. Now, eto pa. Oh, kakahinga ka pa? Oh, eto pa. Hindi pa tayo tapos. Sabi sa inyo, mahaba ito eh. Next, 
clinical alert, ha? warning nurses, anticoagulant medication is considered a high alert medication because it can cause significant patient harm when used in error. Sa mga anticoagulant, kailangan ng double, double independent checking. Dalawang licensed nurse. Very important. Now, if required by your facility before administering anticoagulant medication, have another nurse perform an independent double check to verify the patient's identity and make sure that you have the correct medication in the prescribed strength or concentration. The medication's indication corresponds with the patient's diagnosis. The dosage calculations are correct and the dosing formula used to derive the final dose is correct. The prescribed route of administration is safe and proper for the patient. The prescribed time and frequency of administration are safe and proper for the patient. And if an infusion, the pump settings are correct and the infusion line is attached to the correct port. Hence, importante ang labeling. Line reconciliation is very important. Next. I just prescribe anticoagulant and calcium infusions as needed and according to the order, ordered parameters. Following safe medication administration practices, have another nurse perform an independent double check. If required by your facility, tailor administration to the patient's response and practitioner order parameters. Next, closely monitor the patient for bleeding if the patient is receiving anticoagulant or or has thrombocytopenia or coagulopathy. May mga problema sa coagulation, close monitoring tayo for any signs of bleeding, internal and external bleeding. Okay? Next, if an anticoagulant infusion isn't prescribed, flush the system with the prescribed volume of normal saline with or without added heparin. Nakaranas ako dito sa aming facility, pinaflush namin yung tubings ng heparin. Depende yun sa doctor ng order or depende yun sa SOP ng doctor nyo according to the practitioner's order. Okay? Now, uh, talakayin natin to. Pasingit ko lang to ha. Under pa rin tayo ng implementation but this is um, another subcategory of your implementation. We're going to have the non-anticoagulation strategies. Since we are talking about uh, where we are now in the process where we're giving anticoagulants, we're flushing the tubings with anticoagulants, heparin. Okay, so patients who are receiving continuous kidney replacement therapy or yung CKRT can receive normal saline solution, flushes when continuous infusion of anticoagulation medication isn't feasible, such as in patients whose conditions have caused them to be auto-anticoagulated with a low platelet count. Ordered prescriptions for flush solutions typically range from a volume of 25 to 200 ml and a frequency of every 30 to 60 minutes, depending on the condition of the filter. Okay. Recording of the volume of flush solution is important to allow for removal of the extra fluid from the patient. The prescribed normal saline solution for flushing may contain added heparin, according to facility guidelines. Bags of flushing solution are connected to the patient's access line on the Y port, on the medication port, or with the stop cock. Oh, mga maduduming isip dyan, stop cock. Note that flushing doesn't dissolve clots that have already formed. So this is just some of your reminders when it comes to non-anticoagulation strategies. Magproceed na tayo sa ating ano, sa ating implementation. Wag malilito na sa nursing intervention pa rin tayo. Next, monitor for signs and symptoms of electrolyte imbalances including sir circumor circumoral. Oh my god, I cannot pronounce this one. Circumoral tingling, muscle cramming, or weakness, confusion, irritability, lethargy, tetany, seizure, prolonged QT interval, kaya kailangan nakatouch a cardiac monitor, or other arrhythmias, bradycardia, hypotension, vasodilation, hemodila uh, hemodialysis, ah, hemodialysis, hemolysis, paresthesia, rhabdomyolysis, and positive Chovstek or Trotsch's sign. Chovstek and Trotsch's sign, makikita mo to sa mga pasyenteng, ano, sa mga pasyenteng tet Tetany sign. Sa mga pasyente, di ba may BP up ka? Tama? Mm, neurological sign ito. Okay. Yung pasyente kong first time ko nag-assist ng CKRT, ang primary diagnosis niya is rhabdomyolysis. 
meron akong discussion, meron akong medic, thorough discussion when it comes to rhabdomyolysis na sa ano siya, uh, medical surgical playlist kung saan inisa-isa ko itong disorder na to hinimay natin ito. Kung di mo pa napapanood yun, panoorin mo yun, ililink ko rin siya sa video na ito. Next, adjust prescribed IV fluids as ordered if used to correct electrolyte imbalances. Administer intermittent electrolyte infusions as ordered following safe medication administration practices for repletion. Monitor the patient for signs and symptoms of dialysis disequilibrium syndrome, although rare with CKRT, such as headache, nausea, vomiting, hypertension, decrease in sodium, seizures, and coma. Kaya importante ang GCS. Ano pa? Return the bed to the lowest position to prevent falls and maintain the patient's safety. Next, you have your remove and discard your gloves and other personal protective equipment if worn. Next, you have your perform hand hygiene. Very important, PPEs and hand hygiene. Put on gloves. Gloves are required when touching dialysis equipment. Monitor the CKRT system for any changes on al- or alarm conditions. Normally, mag-aalarm yan kapag puno na yung urine bag mo. Meaning, kailangan mo na siyang tanggalin. I-ref- kailangan mo siyang i- dito, i-drain, tapos ibabalik mo ulit. Set up mo, continue. Mga ganun. Next. You have another cons- consideration ito about the CKRT system monitoring. Kasi kanina, si ba, sinabi ko kanina yung last slide natin about sa monitoring of your CKRT. Ito na. So guys, monitoring a CKRT system involves inspection of the CKRT machine and the circuit. During CKRT system monitoring, be sure to take these steps. Una, inspect the circuit for air, leaks, clotting kinks, and loose connections. Ano pa? Prompt respond to all alarms. More than three hourly alarms increases the risk of clotting. Kaya importante na na close monitoring to. Nandun ka lang sa labas ng kwarto. Or make sure that you are in a place where um, you can hear if there's any alarms. Or hindi talaga maiwasan, naihihi ka na, gusto mong mag-take ng lunch mo, may gagawin ka, ask someone to watch out for you, or watch, uh, be there with the patient as you are doing your errands. Okay? Next, ensure proper positioning of air detector line. Verify all settings and rates. Note all measured pressures. Verify that all pumps are operating as expected. Assess the color and characteristics of the ultra filtrate. Ultra filtrate should remain clear yellow without uh, gross blood. Pink tinge or bloody infiltrate may signal a filter leak. Immediately notify the practitioner of this finding. Assess the CKRT circuit and hemofilter for signs of altered patency such as arterial and venous pressure changes, dark fibers in the hemofilter, changes in the transmembrane pressure, separation of form cells and serum in the tubing, and a decrease in he- uh, hemofilter temperature. If you note such signs, prepare for a system change as necessary. Nakakainga pa ba kayo? Of course, eto na. Complete any additional checks required by the uh, CKRT manufacturer or your facility. Okay? So this is the CKRT system monitoring. Mag-proceed tayo sa implementation. Ano-ano pa yung mga gagawin mo as a nurse? Una, adjust. Hindi una. To continue, adjust the CKRT settings hourly according to practitioner's order and goals of treatment. Change the CKRT circuit every two to three days or as needed according to facility guidelines. Replace solution bags and effluent bag when prompted by the CKRT machine or as needed. Mag-aalarm naman to. Kapag puno na yung urine bag o yung affluent mo is empty na. Next, if the hemofilter or blood tubing clots clamp the blood lines, disconnect the CKRT system from the vascular access device and discard the circuit. Flush and lock the vascular access device to maintain patency until you can reinitiate therapy according to your facility's guidelines. Dialysis catheter are typically flushed with normal saline solution and then locked with prescribed heparin, citrate or tissue plasminogen activator. 
other antimicrobial solutions may also be used. Um, totoo ito, bago mag-start ng CQRT, normally magbibigay ang doktor ng bangko. Stat ng bangkomycin or any type of, what's this, antibiotic. Bago mag-start. Normally, yun ang mga na-encounter ko. Okay? Next. Ito talaga, malapit na to. Kalma-kalma, hingang malalim. Uh, clinical alert nurses, watch out for this. Patients who are receiving dialysis through central venous access device are, the incre- are, at, re- are at increased risk for infection. Central line. With an associated increased risk for morbidity and mortality. Always use sterile, no-touch technique when performing a dialysis disconnection procedure according to your facility's guidelines. <coughs> Excuse me. Discard use supplies in appropriate receptacles. Yellow infectious. Dilaw. Ah, yellow infectious. Black is your ordinary waste. Orange is for soil linens. Depende pa rin yan sa SOP nyo. Sharps, of course, a sharp box. Remove and discard your gloves. Perform hand hygiene. Clean and disinfect your stethoscope with a disinfectant pad. Perform hand hygiene na naman. Put on gloves and as needed, other personal protective equipment to comply with standard precautions. Ano pa, nurses? Eto. Clean and disinfect other reusable equipment according to manufacturer's instructions to prevent the spread of infection. Nasa ano ka na nito, ha? paglilinis na after na ng CKRT mo, pagtapos na. Remove and discard your gloves and if worn, other personal protective equipment. Perform hand hygiene. Request nutritional consult as needed. Dietary services, dietitian referral. Provide education to the patient and family as needed. Perform hand hygiene. Document the procedure. Natapos na natin yung one by one. One by one na uh, uh, implementation ng yung CKRT together with some other special considerations regarding sa anticoagulant, pati dun sa CKRT monitoring. Ngayon, alam ko napakahaba ng chapters na yon. Sa chapters ko, pag hindi mo nasundan, Gusto mong balikan, may malabo sa'yo. Balikan mo lang, madali sa'yo, may timestamp to. This is sa YouTube, naka ano ito, naka, what's this, may timestamp. So, by chapters, okay? Magpo-proceed na tayo hinggang malalim, ha? Sa special considerations. Okay, what are the special considerations that you need to be aware of and you need to think about every time you do CRRT to your patient? Eto na. Okay, so if the patient is scheduled to undergo a procedure that may cause agitation or disruption in treatment, contact the dialysis nurse as needed for additional support during the procedure. If the patient is receiving a citrate infusion for anticoagulation, be sure to stop the citrate and calcium infusions when, uh, whenever the blood pump stops to prevent back flow directly into the patient. So these are the two special uh, considerations you need to be mind of when performing CRRT. Now, the complications, nurses, very important. Uh, complications associated with CKRT may include the following. Makinig ng mabuti, ha? Hinati ko sila sa isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat, lima. Lima. So, meron tayong una yung vascular access-related complications. Bleeding, infection. Under dito, ito yung mga aasahan mo, mga complications. Bleeding, infection, venous thrombosis, venous stenosis, traumatic arteriovenous fistula, pneumothorax, hemothorax, air embolism, visceral injury. Yung pangalawa complication is about circuit-related complications. When I say circuit-related complications, these are the following. Allergic reaction to the filter or tubing, clotting, air embolism, hypothermia, hypotension. Once again, that is for your circuit-related complications. We also have your electrolyte imbalances. Kapag ang pasyente mo din uh, nagsi-CRRT, expect mo na pwedeng malamang sa alamang mayroong electrolyte imbalance yan, such as hypophosphatemia, hypokalemia, hypocalcemia, hypomagnesemia. And then, I also write in here, 
incorrect medication dosing. Those are the complications. And dialysis disequilibrium syndrome na kagayang diniscuss natin kanina, which is very rare, pero mahalagang malaman mo na this can occur. Once again, these are the complications of your CRRT, CKRT treatment. Okay? Now, malapit na tayo mag-proceed. Kung hindi, pa, hindi ka pa nagsubscribe, nakakahiya naman sa'yo. Mag-subscribe ka na. Daldala ko ng daldal dito. Hindi ka pa nagsubscribe. Hindi ka pa nag-hit ng notif bell. O, sige na. Sa gawin mo na yan. Charing. Pampalaki charm lang. Eto na tayo sa documentation. Okay. Documentation associated with CKRT slash CRRT monitoring and care include the following. Makinig ng mabuti ha. Intra-treatment assessment findings. Pag sinabi kong intra-treatment assessment findings, ano-ano yon? Vital signs, oxygen saturation level, and hemodynamic parameters. Interventions to treat decreased body temperature, such as provision of extra blankets or warming blanket. Wait. Importante na, iano mo yan. I-document mo. Repositioning. Nag-reposition ka ba? Laboratory blood samples obtained. All communications with the practitioners, medications administered, and medication administered. So, these are the things that you need to document. What else? Ito na tayo. Uh, all infusions, adjustments, and adjustments to IV fluids. Any signs and symptoms of complications. CKRT settings and pressure and adjustments to the CKRT settings. Nutritional consultations. Circuit changes. Teaching provided to the patient and the family, if applicable, ano ano yung pwede mong ilagay? Their understanding of the teaching and the need for follow-up teaching. Whew, natapos na tayo. Thank you so much, you guys, for joining our today's discussion for today. I hope you really learned something. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more nursing educational videos. Let me know if you have other nursing topics you want us to do. You comment it down below. Abangan mo nga. Yung upload natin next week, it's going to be fun, it's going to be juicy, it's going to be a lot of learning in regards to nursing education. Do me a favor, share this video presentation, share this lecture to your friends, to the nurses in your family, your friend, na, mga, kung kanino mo siya sa tingin na makakatulong, and mag-follow and mag-hit ka na ng notif bell. Tulungan mo na nga ako, ipamalita mo na sa Radyong Sira, pinakabago, pinaka-fresh at ang pinakalibreng Nursing Review Center sa balat ng YouTube. And I uh, will see you again next week. Don't forget to follow me on all my other social media accounts. Everything is at Neil Gave except for my TikTok account, which is Neil Gave Official. I have a Facebook page. This lecture is going to be available there. And I have a podcast channel. It's 3 a.m. Conversation with Neil Gave. And you have a good weekend. I love you. And thank you so much for coming into class. You have a good one.